our founding father of voting rights for all Americans, Dr. Martin Luther King, said, quote, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Never again can we afford to live with the narrow provincial outside agitator idea. Anyone who lives inside the United States can never be considered an outsider anywhere within its bounds. And now he speaks to the people who are criticizing the demonstrations taking place in Birmingham. And he says, I'm sorry to say, your statement fails to express a similar concern for the conditions that brought about the demonstrations. I'm sure that none of you would want to rest content with the kind of superficial analysis that deals merely with effects and does not grapple with underlying causes. He then goes on to explain why it's so important for political movements to use direct action, why sit-ins, marches, and so forth. Isn't negotiation a better path? King says you are quite right in calling for negotiation. Indeed, that is the very purpose of direct action. Nonviolent direct action seeks to create such a crisis and foster such a tension that a community which has constantly refused to negotiate is forced to confront the issue. It seeks so to dramatize the issue that it can no longer be ignored. My citing the creation of tension as part of the work of the nonviolent resistor may sound rather shocking, but I must confess that I am not afraid of the word tension. I have earnestly opposed violent tension, but there is a type of constructive, nonviolent tension which is necessary for growth. Just as Socrates felt that it was necessary to create a tension in the mind so that individuals could rise from the bondage of myths and half-truths to the unfettered realm of creative analysis and objective appraisal, so must we see the need for nonviolent gadflies to create the kind of tension in society that will help men rise from the dark depths of prejudice and racism to the majestic heights of understanding and brotherhood. The purpose of our direct action program is to create a situation so crisis-packed that it will inevitably open the door to negotiation. I therefore concur with you in your call for negotiation. Too long has our beloved Southland been bogged down in a tragic effort to live in monologue rather than dialogue." End quote. Dr. King, before he was assassinated, called for the full weight of the nonviolent movement to go to Washington and demand the total eradication of poverty for all Americans and a second Bill of Rights, the kind Roosevelt called for in between defeating the Nazis, taking the country out of depression, and creating a middle class. The problems of racial injustice and economic injustice cannot be solved without a radical redistribution of political and economic power. And it didn't cost the nation one penny to integrate lunch counts. It didn't cost the nation one penny to guarantee the right to vote. But now we are dealing with issues that cannot be solved without the nation spending billions of dollars and undergoing a radical redistribution of economic power. Yes, yes. If a man doesn't have a job or an income, he has neither life nor liberty and the possibility for the pursuit of happiness. He merely exists 